Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, Lil. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry. Sorry. We're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no. Lucky Land Casino. With cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. I, every, every week I get confused. Are we going to stick to a rating system of 5 or 10 or what? Kurt Cornwell. You're on mute, mate. You're on mute. What are you saying? <laughs> Okay, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so this week we've been watching the new film Take Back, which is uh, a, a new thriller starring Gillian White and Michael Jar White as Brian and Zara living in a small town where her background catches up with them and their daughter gets taken. Before we get into the film itself, we had a chance to catch up with the star of the show and ask her about her experiences filming the great action sequences and what it was like to work with her husband on set. Well, the great thing is, is that I was able to bring a lot of myself into the character because I am a mom, I am a stepmom, I am a businesswoman, and I think I'm a certified badass mm -hmm. now. So, <laughs> so those elements are easy to bring into it. Now, of course, I don't have a past like that, that's when the acting came into, you know, the picture. But I think I, 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 when I finally saw the film, I was really happy with my performance because my main thing, I wanted just to be very believable and very real to the audience that they could relate to this character and all these different facets of herself. And um, I think I, I, I definitely think I did that. And uh, I, was, I was pretty proud of myself that I was able to, to do that. I kind of always walk around with, I'm, I'm such a happy, positive person, but there's this little part of me that is like, I wish somebody would mess with me. You know, <laughs> so I can, you know it's, it's my husband's training. He's trained me to think that way. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it, it wasn't hard to flip, to go from, you know, this, this loving wife and mother to, you know, having to kick whoever's butt I need to kick to save my life and, and, and you know, and protect my family, so. Yeah, it wasn't too hard. <laughs> that was Gillian and Michael Jai White, and the movie Take Back is now available on streaming services. Check it out. So, Mick, we chatted during the film. Can you give me some of your thoughts? What did you think? First of all, Gillian White, unbelievable. What a performance. Because the movie itself was, yeah, it wasn't great. I've oh, got, got to give it now, right? And it started off, uh, I was thinking, oh, Ah, oh, right. Okay. So there's a girl in a bar and she's there and gets drunk. And then it's so formulaic, a hot, crazy chick rocks up and what's, what's his name. And, and then what happens is after a night of drinking and they start getting a little bit fruity with each other, you think to yourself, right, I know where this movie's going to go. They're going to end up going back to her apartment. No, they're not. What they're going to do is she's going to be thrown into the back of a Mercedes Sprinter van and chained to a radiator where Mickey Rourke walks in looking like, hmm, I don't know. He didn't even look human. The only problem with the movie is it committed the worst crime of all. It was just rather boring. Uh, like Some of the bullet points I just put here were just, let me see. She was a lawyer by day, but doing gun disarms at night. 
Michael Joy White, by the way, I thought did a great job in this movie. I thought he was ace because he didn't play Michael Joy White. He didn't go around just beating the crap out of people. In fact, I, I didn't realise he was in Us or in Get Out because he literally looked that good an actor that he would have been able to make the jump to two of the best movies I saw last year. Oh, I don't want a spoiler alert, but I'm just going to tell you now. If you like your movies where people like just dispatch like assassins who break into your house who aren't very good assassins by the way because the old creaky door set her spider sense going tingling but if you watch it and then she's able to slit his throat with a pizza slicer come on now i don't care what anyone says man but i swear to god if ready steady cup would be a lot better if they were pulling stuff like that what did you think nathan um <laughs> so is, is obviously a showcase for Gillian White and her and Michael together in the two lead roles. But it's, you know, it's as you said, like it's a first time writer. It's a director who usually makes really low rated, low budget films. And the plot is really step by step, you know, exactly what's going to happen, exactly where it's going to go. There's no twist or anything like that. And it's a little bit confused as well. You mentioned at the start, like it kidnaps a girl at the start. It sets up. You're not sure what's going to happen to her. You think she's going to get laid and then she actually gets kidnapped. And then they don't really go back to her. Like um, it's not really much of a setup for anything. So the material and the film as a whole, I was disappointed in. But I thought Gillian shined. I thought Michael was great. I think them two together. I mentioned to you like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, a remake of that star and them two would be awesome. But I know they're actually doing a remake with Donald Glover and the uh, the girl from Fleabag. Um, strangely, weird weird casting. But um, I, I, I would love to see them in something together again. I just thought they were so good. But the direction really let it down. I mean, the action scenes were not good. It didn't, I mean, how do you make pad work look bad? Like she looked, you know, she's an amazing martial artist and, you know, she's a, an athlete. She looks great and she's a brilliant actress and they made her look bad on the pads. I mean, if, if you look at this, uh, I don't know if you've seen the new TV series, um, The Equalizer. There's a new one starring Queen Latifah, you know, and that's a woman in her 50s who's not really trained and they make her look great when she fights in it. And this is a 45, you know, in this film, it's a 45 year old woman who can really fight and they made her look bad. And that's such a shame because she deserves better. Um, yeah, like you said, it commits commits the cardinal sin of being a little bit boring. And that's the predictability of the film. Um, but I thought she was good. And I would just really like to see her get some new material. And I would like her to play like a detective or something like that in a film or even in a TV series. I think she would nail it. Well, can I just say, Nathan, the one thing that I, 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 I while we were talking last night, while we were watching it, I, per I, I truly believe it is a classic watch along movie for lockdown because it literally is one of those where you will just message each other and say i cannot believe this and you go what cliche are we going to get next and it was a hard bit in cop who was going through a divorce who was sleeping in his office and you're like well what where can it go next i know he's going to go and meet another hard bit in cop who's trying to hammer a bottle of bourbon at 11 o'clock in the morning and i was like these cliches are coming in thick and fast Tangerine Dream like soundtrack coming on. And it was like, uh, what, what was Mickey Rourke doing? Like, and every time there was a flashback, you know, it didn't even look like Mickey Rourke, I didn't think. And what I did really, really like was, I liked the way that they managed to get a young Richard Gere to play the assassin. So if you're watching that movie, go back and have a look, because I swear to God, the guy just looks like a dirty American gigolo, Richard Gere era dude, right? And when you see that, I'll tell you right now, no one was happier than me when Gillian White gave him the pizza slicer in the throat. We're talking about the new movie Take Back, and we grabbed a few minutes with the film stars who are man and wife in real life and asked them what it was like to work together on the film. Um, we always train at home prior to getting to set so that when we're on set, we have it, we have it down packed. So, you know, he's but he does a lot of the choreography. We were working on a couple probably a couple months before that, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, just getting it together. Primarily when we first trained together and when I was teaching her. You know, it, it's kind of like um, 
to turn on that that mm -hmm. aggression, that that power, it's it, it, like it is like a switch. And at first, I didn't teach her in a way where we're for for movie fighting, you know. So, <laughs> like when she hit, she does not hit like like you you might think like like a girl. No, it's, she, she it's it's no joke. So the first time we really did anything on screen, it was in um, Welcome to Sudden Death, and she's fighting me. And I had I had never really taught her how to pull her punches, and so I was in in a quite a bit of danger. So we had to, we had to really kind of work on that. But now she's honed it in because now you know. Um, but she's only learned kill first, you know. She's just <laughs> she's going to kill, and then I saw I'm like not kill. Yeah, and so you know it's been a a kind of a observation of trying to kind of pull back the kill thing for. For, uh, for screen, screen. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. get it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We essentially did a watch along messaging back and forth and there was a flurry of messages when Mickey Rourke turned up. Um, I think they probably had him for a day shooting because it looked like they were reusing shots throughout the film and slowing it down to stretch out the limited time that they had until that last scene where you know he's in his tight t-shirt, tight shirt and you see his muscles uh, bulging through. He looked pretty ripped. Um, so Kurt, what did you make of it? And what did you make of, of Mickey Rourke? I'll, I'll enjoy anything that Mickey Rourke does. I don't really care. I'm, I'm going to be a diehard person for him no matter what. He looked he looked like he, I was joking with Mick earlier that it's like he tried to put on weight for this movie because as always, just his body looked weird. He was like kind of big, but normal up top, you know, cause he had lost some weight, had some of the implants taken out, but then he had this sort of big gut, but then his arms were bigger at one point than they seemed before. So I, as always, he's all over the map, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, we're not watching the movie for how anyone looks. We're hopefully watching it for the performances, for the, the story, for the action. I thought the performances for the most part were pretty fantastic. Jillian White is great. I agree that I, I can't imagine what maybe maybe a cop drama, but on a, I think on a TV series, watching her build, watching her have time to develop a character through her performance over time would be fun to watch. I really think she's got something and I'm excited to see her go forward. Michael Jai White, I've never been a huge fan of his, but I think he, you know, it was very functional in the film and obviously he helped to anchor a lot of things and you know be be the martial art person in the movie even though really she's the one performing most of the martial art skills and she does pretty great the choreograph the choreography and those choices i thought were funny because it's one of those movies where an assassin is going to get snuck up on by somebody and then they're gonna like do tang sudo or taekwondo to them somehow on the on film it looks better when it's jason Bourne, right if that makes sense like when they sneak up behind the, the assassin thinks they're sneaking around the house, they're going to find the person they're looking for. They come around the corner, oh, gotcha. You know, there's, there's our Jason Bourne or there's our Jillian White. There's our main character that's there's going to put the jump on them. And it's literally like, you know, palm strike to the face and, you know, spinning back crescent kick to the abdomen. And like just these really strange choices that I, maybe if you're not initiated as a martial artist could be entertaining to watch. But the martial artist in me was like, I don't know, I guess, I guess it just is what it is. But not taking away from the performances, Mickey Rourke, again, being one of them, everything he does whenever he opens his mouth, I like it. I think he sounds great. He looks like a goofball, but he's so talented. Um, and there's a couple other people. The, the head detective is a guy that's a character actor. I've seen a bunch of stuff. His name escapes me. But I thought for the script that he was given, he did a pretty good job. And in a lot of it, that's what it comes down to, what the story is. And there's not a lot that the actor can do in front of the camera to completely rewrite the story. Uh, but I think it features her well. Um, it falls into a lot of cliches. It, they have one of my least favorite lines that we see in so many movies, which is when a police officer says, all right, walk us through what happened one more time when we've just cut back to this scene. We're like, okay, so here we're going to... And it, it paints this picture that you've got a guy whose daughter was just taken, which is one movie reference that they're clearly trying to build into this. The guy whose daughter is taken and the cop is going, okay, well, walk us through what happened. He basically says, like I hit in the head and they took my daughter. Like how many times do you need to hear that explained to you? Just re-traumatize Michael Jai White over and over again. Mick says three times he needs to hear it. So, so little things like that in the film where I'm going, you know, they could have left a hundred percent of this part out, but I think it does what it's intended to do, which is really prop her up and let the world see that she's got some skill. And I hope that it, you know, evolves into bigger and better things for her. I like what you said about the choreography there. 
um, that it seemed unrealistic. And I, one thing I noticed with the choreography, Mick brought up the pizza cutter, is that they seem to have the, the yeah. they seem to have the final shot of each fight scene. Like they knew the pose that they wanted her to have, like with the pizza cutter, with the depth of field, or with the, there's a gun shot where she's kind of posing on a table, and then they kind of work seem to work to that. But everything in the lead up to it makes no sense whatsoever. But then that last shot looks pretty good. It almost convinced me the scenes were good. But she looks great in those final shots of, of each fight scene. I didn't think of it that way when watching it, but you're 100 percent right i can picture each of those scenes you're talking about and it's like they're making sure they got good stills for promotional use as you know part of what they're shooting let's make sure we snap that one there um and yeah she looked great and even for him mean, she really looks to the part but it, i've said before nathan leverton when he walks into the room is the smartest guy in the room the room just got smarter when nathan walks in when i walk into a room I'm, I know more about pizza than anybody in the room. The room just got more pizza when I walked in the room. And you're not cutting throats with the pizza cutter. Don't ask me why I know, but take it on good faith. Sorry, Aunt McGinley, you're not cutting throats with the pizza cutter. No, there's, the, my, my, thing, my thing, as you guys were saying, uh, with, the, with the fight scenes, that was the one. Like the spinning back kick in the, like, in, in the car, spoiler alert, but the spinning back kick, then the disarm, was the one that got me. And then literally, it was, I was watching it, I was thinking, am I watching J-Lo? You know, remember when Jennifer Lopez learned Krav Maga that time? Yes, that enough. Movie? That's what I was gonna say. The movie is a mix between Taken and Enough. Enough has a scene where it's, for, it's Jennifer Lopez is in it, right? Yeah. And in her, like the final showdown, it gets real because everything goes dark, right? They turn the lights off or the power goes out. And now that reveals her superpower for the rest of the movie is that she's really good at fighting in the dark. Wow. This movie I'm has the same I... thing, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I'm... Right? This movie has the same thing in that meeting room. She secretly has the little remote control to the overhead lights. And once it goes dark, she goes, she goes dark. You know? Well, Kurt, Kurt, this is the thing. When that point came up, I said to Nathan, she is now officially a serial killer because that was the fourth <laughs> person that she killed on screen in that movie. And vengeance, you know. I'm, Inside I, of 24 hours. <laughs> Yeah, unbelievably so. And it was like that. Like I, I was, I was just sort of looking at it going twenty four hours, and she's like her body counts now up to this. And, and the bit that got me, the first of all, it had shades of Lethal Weapon, apart from where they turned up into the RV when, and then it was like National Lampoon's European Vacation when they turned up. That hillbilly RV thing was there, and instead of having Martin Riggs, they had some cowboy. That like imagine this right? She's just done a land deal, so I'm guessing that she's like a conveyancing lawyer or something. I know I'm reading far too much into it now, right? Mm -hmm. But she did a conveyancing lawyer deal with this guy, and then said, "By the way, you know, I really cut you a great deal on that land deal." And you mentioned like Al Capone got got the uh, your granddad put the hammer on Al Capone. Uh, is there any chance you could shoot a few bad guys for me? And like. Did you see how many shots he missed? And then, like, the first person he hit was the woman. Well, the, he, yeah, he shot the one unarmed person, I think. As well. Yeah, he did. I'll tell you, unbelievable. And this was the thing that got Classic me. cowboy move. Oh, man. Well, <laughs> you're, you're like, the, the thing was, I was expecting, he looked like Garth Brooks's dad. You know what I mean? I was expecting <laughs> him to sing, I got friends in low places. But th there was all these mad scenes where it was like, they have a henchman there, and then Mickey Rourke's like, shoot the dude. And then his hillbilly mate, who looked, who, by the way, I'm convinced that, you know, the guy with the beard, you know. Yeah, the was, Navy SEAL that was Navy, randomly yeah, working exactly. for them. Yeah. But believe it or not, I was watching that. I was thinking, I bet Joe Rogan has 15 of those guys working <laughs> for him in his compound in Texas. As the, 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 the movie, actually, when we're talking about it now, do you know what? <laughs> if I was listening to this podcast right now, I would forget what we said because it now sounds like the greatest movie ever. You know, it's like well, okay. to that end, though, what I'll say is this, like for me, I thought it it's a movie where it's I think you said it's a perfect quarantine movie. It's not a Friday night or Saturday night movie, but it's a, I'm staying home from work, not feeling well, you know, uh, a Tuesday late morning afternoon movie, that kind of thing. Um, it's a it's worth getting into if, if you've already gone through everything else. Um, ah, oh, damn, what was I just going to say? Sorry, Nathan, take it. I was just going to ask Mick, what are we going to rate it out of? Oh, now we're talking. I'm telling you what, I'm going to, I'm going to Brand rate new it. new century type pads? Is that what we're going to No, say? no, well, what, what I was going to say, this is, this is how savage I am. 
I'm watching it. I'm watching them wearing, they're wearing like Andy Hugg's gi. Now, guess what, guys? If you don't know who Andy Hugg is, then shame on you. But it's like they're wearing like Koyoka Shinkai gis. And then she has this like PTSD thing, you know, when everyone turns up because she's gone viral on TV. And it's like, then she's like, you're like, wait a minute, you disarmed a guy and you did a spinning back kick, which wouldn't be my go-to move on a guy with a gun aimed on me first of all, right? So she got away with that. And then she gets performance anxiety, like throwing a, throwing, throwing a f- couple of four count combinations onto the century pads. I'm, if we're gonna, if we're gonna get this now, I think that I'm going to give it one pair of stylish yet affordable boots that you can kick ass with and three yellow legal pads out of five so that's basically four out of five and i'm not i'm not being overly unjealous here but i'm liking it nathan leverton i'm throwing it to you how many legal pads stylish yet affordables or century tie pads okay were they actually oh. century tie pads or did you just pull that out oh no they were like the br- most brand new ones pointed right at the camera yeah that's such a that's a deep cut though. That's really funny. That's exactly what they I, were. I, I yeah, I remember the uh Century catalogs with the um They're like the big air pads. Skis and uh, action jeans. jeans. Yeah. Action jeans, man. Okay, okay, we're right there. Okay, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to give it two stars out of five or two legal pads out of five. Um I did find it boring, but those two stars offered for Jillian and Michael who I think are great and deserve better material. Yeah, I'm also going to go I'll I'll do the pizza cutter one. I'm going to go two pizza cutters out of five, but I'll bump it up with a legal pad. So I don't know, we're calling that two and a third. Um I thought the <laughs> one of the worst parts was the weird skipping over a very apparent PTSD that was happening where they mentioned it and then kind of shamed her for it, which was a little weird in the middle of an otherwise uh, kind of action-packed movie. So uh, there's a lot going on. It's worth watching. Genuinely good performances out of some of the cast. Uh, Could have used a rewrite a couple times over, but uh, it, yeah, it gets my vote for a rainy day. Find more great shows or join the team at sport-social.co.uk. Social Podcast Network. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.